All right, so the story goes, March 1860. Matilda's getting ready for one of the big parties one day. She starts looking around for Molly to help her get ready for the party. She can't find Molly anywhere in the house, so she goes looking for her in the slave quarters, and Molly is out there with Francis Sorrell, right? And they're not meant to play cards or anything. They're, especially him. Now, Molly, she is a slave after all, right? Some of the stories and tales and legends and things that have come down about it over the years do say that it was an ongoing thing, that she might have been pregnant, you know, and all this kind of stuff. But nobody knows if any of that's really true. You know, what, with, with oral history, you just got to kind of sift through it and, you know, filter down and, and, and you know, come to some kind of conclusion about what's probably true. And, and it's usually just the basic stuff. And in this case, that's what it is. But she was a slave. And that's about all we know. Nobody knows the nature of the relationship whether it's consensual or any of that kind of stuff. All we know is she was a slave and Matilda didn't appreciate it, especially on his part. She came running back into the house, went upstairs, went out there, and tumbled to her death from the third floor balcony. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Matilda. Matilda came running inside and went up and jumped off and killed herself. <laughs> the family like to point out that she was prone to fainting and might have fallen, okay? <laughs> Remember, I mean, you know, she, she had on a tight corset. She goes running upstairs, she's all out of breath. <gasps> Case of the vapors, oh, you know. Now that, those vapors, they'll get you. So prone to fainting, might have fallen. She fainted to death. You know? so, so that's what they came up with. And you know, the paper was nice about it. So it worked out for her. She was buried in the cemetery and everything. So, uh, you know, they, they, they at least got that out of it. So, you know, <clears throat> from the thing he might have fallen out of his known as suicide, just in the beginning of his troubles, so because a couple weeks later they find Molly Hanging, slave quarters, and it looks like she killed herself. Did it? I mean, it's like, mm. yeah. <laughs> Well, you look at it, you know, I mean, it's back, back then, it's like, hmm, that's obvious. The poor dear, she just couldn't take it anymore. She felt so bad about what happened to the children. She couldn't. She was laid up with guilt. She goes and kills herself, too. It's just a terrible thing. It's just awful, you know. That kind of stuff. But then, people start, you know, seeing apparitions. You start getting these stories floating around about, you know, ghosts, there's ghosts, there must be the ghost stories, and people start trying to figure it out, and come up with these different ideas, and, you know, things that, theories as to what may have happened, and probably from the beginning, the most popular one has been that somebody in the family killed Molly, because they blamed her for the children's death. Six of the kids were grown, it's possible, there's motive, opportunity, and all that, I mean, some people say that's very highly possible. You know, I mean, it, it's possible. If it one of them or two of them or all of them, you know, I mean, they just might have decided to get rid of them. I mean, nobody really knows. Uh, some people can say, oh, yeah, someone in the family. All right, they take it all the way to Francis Sorrett. See, they say that he followed Matilda back into the house, chased her upstairs, tried to have a discussion with her. It got out of hand. She got knocked off. And then you had to tie these loose ends a couple of weeks later with Molly, right? So pick the one you like the most. And that portrait is? That is Moxley. He did not sit for that portrait. The scab said he wanted to use the photo in the other room as the mom. But yeah. So anyway, that one is that's the most dramatic scenario, certainly. Uh, but uh, nobody really knows exactly what happened in either of them. So you, can, you have all this drama and mystery surrounding the whole unfortunate tragedy and then all the local reports of the apparitions, you know, uh, and all that. So that's what happened at the Soar Weed House and gives it a whole other dimension that it is known for besides the rich and fascinating history of Francis Sorrell and his amazing story coming to America, becoming one of the rich guys in that son, becoming one of these generals and all that good stuff. So, yeah. I'm, I'm really, um, what is the word, I'm really aware of the opulence. Um, 
and the convenience built in, having recently developed in Hamilton North, or what in the north, the same time period, much more Spartan, much more, much simpler. I haven't been up there, but it would be nice. But in New England also, there are many, many mm -hmm. homes of people, friends of this era, but oh, right. they're not nearly this yeah. occupant. 